Well, in the third quarter, the FNB estate agency survey noted that estate agents have reported a further increase in the percentage of sellers in order to downscale due to the life stage. In 2008, it was estimated that 14% of households were selling homes because their children have left home or because a large home was no longer required. And today, that number sits significantly higher. John Luce, who's a property market strategist at FNB, will be taking us through the third quarter property barometer right now. Thanks so much, John, for joining Hello, us Nisha. today. Well, as I say, we've seen uh, some sellers or an increase in the percentage of sellers coming through in order to downscale. Let's go through the main driver here and what you're meaning by life stage uh, of the seller because one would assume some of that downscaling would happen on account of affordability. Well, uh, we do have different categories of selling. This one is specifically we, we, are, we try and get the agents to estimate for life stage, mm -hmm. not for financial difficulty, not for anything else, but just for life stage. Um, that refers, or it's, it's, it's normally people who probably heading over the 50s, maybe into the 60s, either they're heading for retirement, uh, they're aging, so a large house is no longer practical for them, or alternatively, they might it might still be practical, but it's not needed anymore because their family has moved on, they're the empty nest syndrome or whatever yeah. you want to call it. Uh, at cu currently, this has moved up to 23% of total sellers, according to the agency survey. Um, it's interesting, it's, I've, be, I've been watching it over the last few years gradually rise. Now, so I've taken a look at the demographics of the country, and what we're seeing now is that the fastest, or over the last five years, um, maybe a bit before that too, but the, the growth rates of age cohorts in this country above the 50s mm -hmm. are on the accelerating path. The over 50s are becoming a bigger percentage of the population over time. So we've got something of an aging population, I guess you could call it that. And the fastest age cohort now is in the, is in the region of 60 to 64. Um, so I think that's got something to do with it. But then on top of that, I think it's also, well, it, it, it can also be cyclical. Uh, we don't have the survey going back to previous cycles, so we don't know how it, uh, it varied over the cycle. It could be that these sellers, who are not desperate sellers, wait for a better time to sell their houses to, to downscale. Um, and then, of course, there's all these rising costs Absolutely. that come on to housing. Well, I'm going to uh, hit pause at that point because let's look at, uh, you know, cycles within the economy because you say these are not desperate sellers. So one's got to beg the question, why now? Because we've got prices, yes, sitting better than they were in 2008, but certainly by no means fully recovered. So, you know, one would assume that they'd be hanging on a little bit longer to take more advantage of higher prices down the line. Well, it's possible. Uh, I, I think that um, there's, there's this trade-off. Uh, yes, the market isn't one. It's not a wonderful seller's market, although it's better than two, three years ago. Um, but there's all the costs that are coming on to housing now. We know about the electricity cost escalations. Uh, other municipal or municipal assessment rates are going up significantly. And other utilities as well. So the costs related to running a household, those utilities and tariffs costs have increased significantly. The CPI... Uh, for housing is now significantly above the overall s consumer price in inflation rate, mm -hmm. and that's because of the predominantly because of those charges. So, what do you do? You've got the flexibility. You don't need this big house anymore. In a lot of cases, when you're getting to that age or that stage of your life, downscale you can save a save a lot of money in the process. Oh, it's also presenting then opportunity on the flip side for buyers in the market. One would assume looking for homes because not only are the prices as high as they potentially could be uh, once the market recovers, but you also have lower rates working in favour. So what kind of demand is actually coming through for the supply line that's uh, that's filtering through? difficult to say exactly what is the impact of this, um, but I would say this, this particular phenomenon of, of, of more uh, people downscaling due to life stage should uh, boost supply on the higher end or, the, or the, with the larger sized houses and should boost demand uh, further down with the smaller size of houses. Uh, that, 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 that I would say would probably be the case. Incidentally, what we have been seeing over the last year or two is the lower, uh, the, the, the smaller sized houses performing slightly better in terms of price growth mm -hmm. and the cheaper houses performing slightly better in price growth. And part of that might be uh, because of this. There are also other elements of society that are looking for more affordability too. While that, uh, those other elements of society look for more f affordability, to what extent is this kind of phenomenon uh, pricing out uh, first-time home buyers out of that medium-sized market? Well, it is a possibility, I guess. Uh, it's uh, at, at the moment, um, you wouldn't think it would have a huge impact on price growth. Uh, 
There's slightly better price growth in, on the smaller end, but the whole market at the moment is weak. Mm -hmm. um, it's not the boom years. It's not, when, it's not the years, 10 years ago, when there was a chronic shortage of housing given this massive surge in demand across the board. So, yes, I guess it's in that it's positive for demand and therefore boosts price growth on the, on the lower and the smaller sized end. It would probably hamper first-time buyers slightly, but uh, I, I'm, I'm not convinced at the moment it would have too much of an impact. But this could be a long-term trend. Given that uh, population growth is accelerating in the age cohorts above 50, this could be a longer-term trend, uh, which could put a lot of pressure on the supply of retirement property and a significant amount of pressure on the supply of smaller-sized properties uh, until the building yeah. sector adapts to that in years to come. I was actually going to ask you just how sustainable a trend do you see this being? Because like you say, it was 14% uh, that were you know, downscaling in terms of uh, this life stage or life cycle at the beginning of 2008. It's up to 23 percent right now so it's certainly a rising phenomenon that we're seeing in South Africa it is it's, it's just a question of how much is it of it is just due to the cycle and that we don't know because we haven't we don't have data further back and how much is due to the structural change my guess is it's a bit of both um, and yes if the population is going to carry on aging over time uh, we would have a, a, a bigger portion downscaling yeah. and looking for smaller property we'd have some growing demand over time for retirement type property too well, John, let's leave it there. Thanks so much for your insights this afternoon. John Lewis, of course, is property market strategist at FNB.